We'd like to begin the program with our Heights High student singers, Gold Rush, who will also be joined by our barber shoppers.
Thank you, Gold Rush and their barber shoppers, who are heights high student singer under the direction of Jesse Lang. Another round of applause for Jesse Lang. I'm Dr. Susan Carver, the founding president of the Heights Schools Foundation. It is my honor to welcome everyone to the 38th annual Cleveland Heights High School Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame. I'd like to especially welcome the new inductees present today to accept this honor, as well as their friends and family. Also, I'd like to acknowledge all the other alumni gathered here to celebrate with you, including High School's Foundation Board of Trustees and Officers, and the Cleveland Heights University Heights members and our outstanding super superintendent, Dr. Talisa Dixon. Also, Dr. William, Dr. Williams, the Heights High interim, interim principal, and all the Cleveland Heights University Heights staff, both current and present, and past, students and community members. Now, in its 38th year, the Hall of Fame has inducted over 360 members. The Hall of Fame was created as a way for Heights to honor the accomplishments of its alumni while giving current students solid examples of what they can accomplish in life hearing from adults who've sat in the same seats and who've walked the same halls as they do. With over 55,000 Cleveland Heights High School graduates, our students have an impressive and diverse list of alumni from whom to select for induction. A student committee, the Image Makers, selects inductees from nominations made by the general public. I'd like to invite Dr. Talisa Dixon, our dynamo of a Cleveland Heights University Heights superintendent, to the podium now to say a few words of welcome. Without the vision and support of Dr. Dixon, it would be difficult standing before you celebrating as the Heights School's foundation. Thank you, Dr. Dixon, for all that you do. Thank you, Dr. Carver. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Cleveland Heights University Heights City School District, I want to welcome each and every one of you today to the beautiful and newly renovated Heights High School. If you had a chance to tour the building, I'm sure you see what makes it so special. The historic preservation combined with modern educational space designed for today's students. This blend of our students' rich history with this promising future is why we're so excited to host this event here at Heights High tonight. This allows us to connect to our newest class of Hall of Famers, alumni who have distinguished themselves in their chosen fields with our current students and the amazing work that is happening in our classrooms. I want to thank all of our alumni, not only the ones being inducted today, but to those thousands of Heights High grads around the world. Your success and your accomplishments inspire our students to dream big and to know that the journey that they started right here in these halls can lead to greatness. Finally, to the 10 newest members of our Alumni Hall of Fame, I say congratulations and to thank you for making us all proud to call you Heights Tigers. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. And thank you to this year's Image Maker students who will introduce each inductee, as well as a special thanks to their advisors, Josh Luton, Charlene Searcy, and Joy Henderson. Inductees will be honored in order of their graduation year. That means the youngest go last. Please welcome our first Image Maker, Taylor Thomas and honoree. Taylor. Hi. Good evening, everyone. 
How are we? Good. So my name is Taylor Thomas. I'm a junior here at Heights High enrolled in the early college program. I am privileged to introduce Judge Gail Rose Kane, class of 1956 graduate. She's a retired judge, lawyer, teacher, and committed philanthropist. Judge Kane began her professional career as a teacher in both religious, religious and public schools. She then entered law school at the age of 42 and served as a judge on the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas. Um, as I got to know, know Ms. Judge Kane, one of the most interesting things I found about her is that she always values learning. Even after her undergraduate and graduate years, she continued taking classes in Judaism, Spanish, bridge, and current events. She also values kindness. She told me that if you have a choice between being right and kind, always choose kind. She lives a philosophy through many years of volunteer work to support the things she's most passionate in, such as the Cleveland Orchestra, the Cleveland Institute of Music and Art, the Natural History Museum, and the Council for Jewish Women. I am privileged to introduce the stunning Judge Gail Rose Kane. Thank you, Taylor. Taylor's one of the image makers, and she certainly made me sound like a good image. She also was, as my brother succinctly put it, my chaperone around the school. And without her, I would never have found where I was going. So thank you, Taylor. I also want to thank the alumni and the uh, Cleveland Heights uh, Foundation for this great honor. I'm very humbled to be here today. I don't remember the auditorium being this big and this lovely, but um, I just want to say one thing. Well, there was, I don't remember much that I learned at Cleveland Heights High School, but I did remember two really important things. First, I love learning. I love going to school. I went to the Cleveland Heights schools from the second grade all the way through, and also to keep on learning because the world that I graduated into does not exist today. So one has to keep on learning, and that's what I did. And I thank you all. Thank you, Taylor. Good afternoon, my name is Kayla Harvey and I'm a senior. I am a member of the National Honor Society, Minority Student Achievement Network, Student Council, and a varsity cheerleader. I will be attending The Ohio State University in the fall <laughs> and majoring in journalism. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Tracy Shermer, class of 1967. He was a physician at Kenyon College for 28 years and is an advocate for those with physical and mental, and mental disabilities. He currently teaches emergency medical skills to first responders. When Dr. Shermer was at Heights High, he was a football player on the 1965 undefeated team. <laughs> He remembers his teammates and the incredible support of the community. He was also president of his senior class and he said the experience taught him important skills to compromise, coordinate activities, and to serve others. I admire Dr. Shermer for his service to humanity and for creating programs that help others. And the most important piece of advice he gave me was to follow my heart. I am honored to introduce Dr. Tracy Shermer. I did not prepare anything. It's not that I didn't think about it. It's not that I want to come across as a jibberty jabbit. But I just wanted to say a couple of things to say thank you. This is an honor not expected. And in many ways, I do feel um, overwhelmed by it. Um, there are things that occur in our lives that make us all 
pursue and desire something different or pursue and desire something that doesn't exactly fit with what we have thought we were going to be, and that's true with me. I never thought I was going to be a physician. I always wanted to be an astronaut. I always wanted to go to the moon. I always wanted to go to the next horizon, become a nuclear physicist, and somehow cure the world of all the energy problems that we have incurred and we're now continue to incur, which just reminds me I did spend weeks over at among the Na'aninen and the Nakoda and the Lakota tribes at Standing Rock protesting the pipeline that was going in there, taking care of those that were hurt or ill. And being of the tribe, the Aani Nin, and having the name Peza Duto Anga, um, and being a veteran of the Vietnam War, I was able to go with them to the actual site of the burial and was able to be there for the prayers that were said um, as we fight to try to keep the earth clean and healthy and assume the responsibilities we do have as good stewards of this world. Being good stewards of this world means that we have to take chances, we have to speak out, we have to stand upright, we have to take care of each other, and we have to take care of the creatures that walk this earth. We are responsible for each other, period. We are responsible for the health and welfare of each other, period. We have to do better than what we are doing. I continue to try to do that on a daily basis in trying to care for those that come to me. I try to listen and to give them the time to tell me their stories so that I can hear them, understand them, and be able to best serve them. I continue to try to outreach toward those that are hurt by teaching others to reach out to them through ambulance services or EMS. I continue to go to the Indian tribes in northern Montana trying to proclaim their need for health care and their need for justice and their need for being treated as human beings and people that we deserve and want to elevate and to proclaim that this is their land and that we are also sharing the same land. I want you all to know how important this honor is because Cleveland Heights, through its many teachers and its students, have instilled within each of us that desire to be something that is beyond us as individuals, but it can reach out to all people and all of humanity. It's Cleveland Heights and the teachers and the students themselves that gave that to me. And therefore, I wish to say to you, please, continue to be involved, continue to speak out, continue to walk the road that you want others to see, continue to proclaim something that's wrong as being wrong. If something's right, say it's right. If somebody has given you a good service, compliment for them, them for that service. Don't just complain, but reach out and love one another in a way that can only serve humanity and truly what we are all meant to be, which is good, good stewards of this earth which the Baha Deki has given to us. God bless you all. Christine Roberts, and I am a senior at Cleveland Heights High School. I am a member of the National Honor Society and a member of the Minority Student Achievement Network. I also work at Ben & Jerry's. Next year, I plan to attend Ohio State University, where I will major in psychology and minor in business. It is my... Thank you. It is my honor to introduce Mrs. Lori Hermelin Bush, class of 1974. She is an advisor to the CEO and president of Rodan and Fields, where she led the company from a startup to a billion dollar cosmetic corporation. Mrs. Bush talked about the importance of her Heights High friends. She said that being surrounded with others who were ambitious and visionary definitely had an impact on her. That was true in 1974, and it is true in 2018. Mrs. Bush, like Mrs. Bush, I have a great set of friends that are many are in MSAN, and we work very hard, and we will go to college soon. It is my honor to introduce Mrs. Lori Bush. We appreciate the history that you and your class left for us, and we are proud to continue that legacy. I don't think 
think I've ever gotten a medal before. Thank you. Um, I'm a big believer in return on luck, not some, an idea I invented. Um, Jim Collins talks about it quite a bit in his business books, but luck really happens to everybody. Good luck, bad luck, and what you make of it really determines how wonderful or not your life can be. And I've just been um, blessed with so many luck events that have really changed the trajectory of my life and hopefully allowed me to help change the trajectory of other lives. It started off with my parents. My, my mother, Barbara Hermelin, who's here today, um, lost my father many years ago, but they made a point to move to the Heights so that my sister, Terry, who's here, and I could attend Heights, one of the best high schools in the country. And that was a, a good place to start. Um, and that's when I talked about developing the relationships. Being part of something that's bigger than yourself is really the key to happiness. And I met my lifelong best friend, Jill. Um, we sat next to each other alphabetically. I, when I look back in the yearbook, I realized that my friends were all sort of clustered alphabetically because we used to sit alphabetically in school. Um, and I, I followed my luck events and they were always involving people. And perhaps one of the greatest luck events I had was, was attending a medical conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was uh, engaged to my mom's ideal son-in-law, a nice Jewish boy from New York. But then I met this tall drink of water, Tom Selleck wannabe, I think, in uh, the elevator in, at the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas. And it changed my life forever, changed the direction of my career and uh, allowed me to um, accomplish things that I probably wouldn't have been able to do had I not had the support of the people who I love and who love me. And, and through the years, through my businesses, through my nonprofit organizations, I continue to believe that luck happens in different ways. Last July, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, something um, I didn't see coming. I thought I was the healthiest person on the planet. And um, the result of that breast cancer experience has also turned out to be quite a beautiful thing. Uh, I tried to retire in uh, 2016, and instead I've been pulled into the opportunity to create some amazing new businesses with my doctors and with other friends who have been supportive of me through all of that. So I encourage everybody to take a look around you and really appreciate the people who are sitting by your side and who are there with you in life. It makes life a beautiful thing and a beautiful place to be. And I'm so privileged to be part of the Heights High Legacy. Thank you so much. We now would like to welcome Joe Keneally. Good afternoon, I hope everybody's dry. <laughs> My name is Joe Keneally and I'm a senior here at Cleveland Heights. I'm a member of the National Honor Society, the Jazz Band, and the Symphonic Windows Ensemble. This fall, I'll attend Cleveland State University to study urban planning. <laughs> Thank you. This afternoon, it's my honor to introduce Dr. Tova Klein class of 1982. She is the director at the Barnard College Toddler Center for, in New York City as an international expert on child development. When I spoke to Dr. Klein, I was very impressed with her passion for learning. She has published so much and has a new book in the future. She said that her passion for learning started at Heights High with her teacher, Dottie Icove. This really sparked her learning and has been very influential for her. While I'm just getting ready to graduate, I share Dr. Klein's appreciation for the teachers at Heights High and their influence on me. I also identified with Dr. Klein's love of Cleveland Heights. She said that it was a small town, but still had the advantages of an urban, a major urban center. Without further ado, here's Dr. Klein. Thank you, Joe. I have to echo that Joe has been my chaperone all day and I was sure I would be lost in this building, but thank you, because I did not get lost. Um, I'm beyond honored to be here. I'll try not to cry. Um, 
I have to say that Heights High runs deep in my blood. My brothers who are here know that, my parents know that, my husband knows that, my children know that. They hear about it all the time. Um, I want to thank the, the teachers and the staff that I had and the Alumni Association, and also Sue Sachs, who nominated me. When I got to Barnard as a professor many years ago now, I met Sue Sachs. She was a psychology and education professor, and guess what? She was a class of one of the 1950s at Cleveland Heights High School. So out of 10 faculty members, two of us were from Heights High. Um, Heights is everywhere. And yesterday I was at a meeting in New York City on um, our very segregated New York City public schools and it reminded me of who I am and where I come from because um, New York City is the most international, most diverse city in this country, if not the world, and we have the most segregated schools. But my husband and I have worked very hard to find the most diverse public schools in New York City for all three of our children and that has set my heart, why? Because I knew that education was so much more than academics. It was about the people, it was about the teachers, and it was being in a place that wasn't all white, that wasn't about people who looked like you or came from backgrounds like you. Um, and that comes from my education here. I've also always been appreciative of my parents who very intentionally chose Cleveland Heights when they were relocated to Cleveland. We heard about this our whole lives. They picked a nursery school for us that had children of different colors and they wanted us in the Cleveland Heights um, schools. And that has really informed my work. At Heights High, not only did we have in the 1970s, did I have friends from all different backgrounds and places and cultures, um, but from all different abilities. And as I watch my own children and I do my own work where I see children so trapped as if smart kids shouldn't be with struggling kids, that was not the case when we were here. We were all in it together. My friends who went to summer school to make up credits because they had failed, came back the next year, those of us who did well, um, we all went to class together. I also had role models here. Dottie Eikhove was an English teacher. I don't know if any of you had the privilege of having her, but I didn't love English and I loved her and she turned me on to literature, particularly satire. Um, and when my own children read it, all I could do was talk about her. But she also showed me that you had to be passionate. You had to be passionate about whatever you chose to do, that it was okay to think outside the box, um, and that you should think outside the box, as she did. Um, and I also learned here about the Me Too movement. Um, so to you young women here who are unfortunately learning about it but have such voice, we didn't have voice, and I was stunned to find out that our high school teachers looked at us as objects and rated us. I was appalled. And I remember thinking there was nothing I could do then, but it did give me voice. And the young people have much more voice in this, um, and I'm just thrilled to see that. Um, so where does this take me now? I was thinking of how insecure I was in, in high school, and yet how bold, and maybe that's a metaphor for life. Um, I helped organize the boycott against our prom because it was at Stouffer's and I, I was boycotting Stouffer's but I was also in homeroom and friends with one of the two people organizing prom and we would sit and we would laugh and we would joke and we would rib each other and as I look at an increasingly divided society I think we need to do that. We need to sit down with people who we disagree with but come together and find the good in people. Um, and when I look back at my path and I see some of my friends who are here tonight, my family members are here, I have friends here, uh, many of whom struggled in life. We all struggle, we all have ups and downs, but community matters. We've still reached out to each other, we've still turned to each other, and we've made it. We're here. We all made it through high school. Some of us took longer than others, but we all graduated. And I think the bottom line is when there's community and you realize that you have similar goals, you reach those goals together. Um, I was bold, I realized that, and I think people saw me as bold, and what they didn't understand was that I was also scared underneath. And much of the work I do with children and families are children and families who are struggling. Uh, it's not so hard to find good in people who might on the outside look like they're not so good, um, but you can look a little deeper and you find it. So I go back to the work I do with children, um, because I think it informs all of us. 
Um, that if we could be more like children with that wonder and curiosity which attracts me to young children, what do they do? They stop, they look, they look up by the way, they, they also look down, but they look up, they observe, they're open, they're open to new things, they're afraid of the unknown, but they're willing to go into it. Um, and they're open to new paths, and they're certainly open to relationships and people. So being here today and being shown through classes and talking to students, I'm just reminded that it's relationships who make us who we are. And thank you. Now we'd like to welcome up Dash Chesney. Good afternoon. My name is Dad Chesney. I'm a senior here at Heights High School. I'm a member of the National Honor Society, a student leader for the Minority Student Achievement Network. I'm also a part of Cleveland Heights Youth Committee, boys basketball, and soccer teams here at Cleveland Heights High School. I will, this fall, I'll be attending school at North Carolina A&T State University as a I'll be a biology major on the pre-med track to go into stem cell research. I am honored to announce, to introduce Dr. Milton Morris. Dr. Morris is the CEO and president of New Spray Medical, a company that designs biomedical, electrical, and plantable medical devices. He left Heights High with a full ride scholarship to play football at Northwestern University, where there he only won four games in four years. <laughs> As you look back on his time at Heights, he really appreciates the diversity, the many school clubs and sports teams the school has. He felt that Heights High helped him build his character and helped him find his potential. As we talked and got to know each other, I really we really identified and understood that high side really helps you become a better person and that he felt it really helped. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it may have been several years since you have graduated, but so much of what you did, so, so much of what you described is the same for us current students. I'm honored to introduce Dr. Milton Morris. My remarks are prepared, I admit it. We'll keep it short and brief. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the image makers for having this type of a forum to reflect back on uh, people's achievements and accomplishments and to um, see the value in some of the professional achievements that people have done. And more than anything, to um, acknowledge the greatness that comes through the hollow halls of Cleveland Heights High School. I want to thank uh, Betsy uh, for all of the arrangements. I've got a large contingent here, and uh, we made a lot of last-second changes. I also want to thank Stephanie Robinson for uh, nominating me and making my nomination a priority, for remembering a 30-plus old conversation that I had with her, expressing why introduction or induction, I should say, into the Heights High School Hall of Fame might actually be important to me as it is. I'd like to um, thank students who elected me for seeing the value and the contributions that I've made in the medical device field. And I want to thank my mom for having the foresight to actually move to Cleveland Heights to provide the kind of opportunities that we've benefited from and that many of you students have benefited from as well. Lastly, I want to thank my wife and my kids for making the sacrifices required to allow me to go do and pursue my professional uh, ambitions, which often take me out of town. And uh, she holds the fort down for me. So I love you. Thank you for doing that. And to the students, I just want to say, continue the great tradition 
find your passion, and make a great story for yourself. Thank you. Next, we will have Hassan Lewis Majid. My name is Hassan Lewis Majid, and I'm a senior here at High Top. I am also a member of Minority Student Achievement Network, and I performed in several school and theater community and theater community productions. In the fall, I will be attending Tuskegee University, majoring in finance. I am so pleased this afternoon to introduce Mr. Sean Sullivan, class of 1988. He is unique in this celebrated group of alumni in that after college, he returned to this community and is now a teacher at Heights. In this school district, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a teacher in this school district, I'm sorry. He is currently the science and engineering specialist at Garrity Professional Development School and was the Heights boys soccer coach for 14 years. He also built a strong soccer development program in this community. It is safe to say that if you or your children play soccer here in the last 25 years, you are a beneficiary of Mr. Sullivan's contributions. When Mr. Sullivan talked about his experience at Heights High, he said that being a part of the soccer team and having supportive teachers taught him to give back to his community. And on top of his long list of accomplishments, he overcame a personal battle last year, which makes it even more of a blessing for me to introduce a man who has given so much to our district, students, and families, Mr. Sean Sullivan. Thank you, Sean. I'd like to start by thanking Hassan. He's an outstanding young man, and congratulations, I thank you. I stand before you a very proud Cleveland Heights University Heights educator and coach, and I extend my congratulations to the 2018 inductees for the, their incredible accomplishments. I salute the Heights Schools Foundation and the Image Makers for making this day possible. I would like to start by thanking several groups that have had a significant impact on my personal and professional path. First, to my family and close friends, your unconditional support and encouragement, especially in the last 17 months, has played the biggest role in where I am today. Thank you, and I love you. To my colleagues, students, soccer families, and community members who took the time today to show up and support me, thank you very much, and I appreciate you. To the city of Cleveland Heights, my home for the last 40 years, where I grew up and continue to live in the noble neighborhood, thank you. To the Cleveland Heights University Heights School District for consistently hiring the best staff to provide a strong educational foundation for all students, including myself, to succeed and make their impact on the world. To the Heights Athletic Department, whose coaches, staff, and athletes represent our district with pride and dignity. To the Heights soccer programs, recreational, academy, club, and high school. I thank all the coaches, players, parents, and supporters over the years. Everyone is so very special to me. And finally, to the Cleveland Heights University Heights teachers, administration, staff, students, and families, who I believe with all my heart and soul are the best in the world. It is the honor of my life to work alongside you all. I want to share something quite personal, an unexpected journey that I began four years ago and didn't even realize it. And the encompassing message will help you understand the depth and impact that Heights High has had, not only on me directly, but that on future generations. In 2014, after 21 years of coaching boys soccer at Heights High, 14 years as the head coach, the time came for me to step down. As you can imagine, it was a very difficult decision, but it was mostly based upon signals that my body was sending me that the extra hours I was working during the season were taking a toll on me. So I stepped down, while all the time quietly watching and supporting the team. I figured that the body signals would dissipate, but in fact, they got worse. So, after two years of more than 10 puzzled doctors, I finally found a specialist that could identify the problem. It turned out to be a rare, slow-growing cancer, which was virtually undetectable at first, but was now in the final stages and the and, and immediate major abdominal resection and reconstruction, uh, reconstruction surgery was necessary. Now, I don't share this for sympathy. In fact, I have a very strong mindset. And just 10 weeks after that surgery last May, 
I ran and completed the Cleveland Half Marathon, 13.1 miles, just to show cancer. It can't and it won't keep me down. Thank you. And in 16 days, I will once again be running the Cleveland Half Marathon as a one-year cancer survivor. And if all goes as planned, this November, I will be in New York City running the full 26.2 mile marathon. I got a second chance at life and I'm gonna make the most of it. Now, the cool part of the story is that the doctor who diagnosed me when no one else could and saved my life was a Cleveland Heights High graduate. <laughs> and it doesn't stop there. In November of this year, it was determined that a second surgery was needed. And as I was being wheeled into the operating room, a voice said to me, don't worry, Mr. Sullivan, we got you. And I looked up from the gurney, and it was a student that I taught in first grade at Oxford Elementary School 24 years ago, who was now part of the surgical team. So, to Dr. Shapiro and medical technician Brian, both Heights graduates, I thank you for saving my life. You are both in my Heights High Hall of Fame. When I tell the story to others, they often say, what are the chances of that happening? And I reply, the chances are actually quite good. It is inevitable that you will run into a Heights graduate in the city of Cleveland Heights or University Heights. But as you branch out into surrounding communities and across the state, the odds remain quite high that a Heights, um, that, that a Heights graduate who is excelling in their career will cross paths with you. And as you travel across the country and span the globe, there's always that chance that you will meet a Heights Tiger, and when you do, you will share an immediate bond. The message I am conveying is that Heights High students and alumni are actively changing the community, the state, the nation, and even the world, and we all share a common bond. We have all walked the halls of this amazing school with this amazing staff in an amazing community. I am fortunate as a Cleveland Heights University Heights educator and coach to witness and interact with the next generations that will influence our society. I can see that early spark embedded in the elementary students as they are just beginning their journey. And I have been consistently impressed with the talent and composure of today's Heights High students who are currently making their impact in many ways. In closing, I encourage you to take three messages from my speech today. First, choose a healthy lifestyle. We sometimes take our good fortune of health for granted, and when it is taken away, you realize just how important it is. Listen to the signals your body sends you. If something is wrong, seek attention as quickly as you can. Second, always follow your passions, talents, and your dreams. You can be anything you choose to be. And yes, it takes hard work to be successful, but your efforts will pay off and you will make your mark on the world. And finally, take time out of your life to give back to others. Be a hero to a child, a helper to those in need, and an inspiration to your family, friends, and community. In doing so, you will affect the lives of others in ways you can't possibly imagine. Thank you so very much for this honor. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I now invite Jalen Coleman. Good evening. My name is Jalen Coleman, and I am a senior here at Cleveland Heights High School. I am a student leader in the Minority Student Achievement Network, and I am the statistician and AV help for the basketball program here at Heights High. After graduation, I am pleased to be attending Tennessee State University to study accounting and finance and minor in audio engineering. This evening, I am so pleased to introduce and congratulate Mr. Christopher Young, CEO of M McAfee Computer Science at class of 1990. Mr. Young is the Chief Operating Officer for McAfee, a computer security software company. When I asked about his years at Heights, he said that he was so happy to be a part of a uniquely diverse community. He said that he is so pleased to look back to where he came from knowing that he was properly prepared for college and to be a leader at McAfee. He remembers being encouraged, motivated, and inspired by other students and his peers around him. It was a pleasure to talk to Mr. Young because of his humility, accomplishments, and his success 
are an inspiration to me, and I am sure that it is an inspiration to all those in Cleveland Heights High School. Although he cannot join us today from his home in California, he did send a video attachment for us today. Hello, Heights High. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person to celebrate this honor with each of you. I'm humbled to be an inductee into the Heights High Hall of Fame, and I want to say congratulations to the other class of 2018 inductees this year. I grew up in Cleveland Heights. I went to Fairfax, I went to Roxborough, my family went to church in the community. Cleveland Heights is very much a part of who I am. Today, I live on the West Coast in San Francisco. I have the privilege of leading McAfee, uh, a, the world's largest cybersecurity company. But I'll tell you, my journey's been a long one. Uh, when I was 25, I started my first company, a company called Cyvalence. My buddies and I, three of us got together. You know, we raised money on our credit cards. We slept on floors of our friends' apartments in New York when we went out to sell things. Um, we built a great company in the late 1990s. Um, but in the year 2000, the internet crashed and we ran into some challenges. And so I, uh, I learned some lessons along the way which helped me become the leader and the professional that I am today. And I wanted to leave just a few of those with you. First, I would tell you something different than you might hear in cliches, and that's failure is an option in your life and in your career. Because if you're not out there trying and failing at different things, you're not gonna learn. And learning is what it's all about. It's one of the things that I take with me um, throughout my life is that the, the opportunities I've had to learn have made me the person that I am today. So I would tell each and every one of you, learn a lot, fail often, have a thirst for learning. The second thing is that you always need to look for the opportunities in your situation and your circumstance. If you learn things, if you tackle challenges aggressively, you can find opportunities to grow yourself, grow your career. Today's world, it's gonna, for you, it's gonna be about educational opportunities. But as you go through high school and college and do the other things in your life, look for career opportunities, look for, for chances to grow and learn. And then the third piece of advice I'd leave for all of you is that you should control what you can control and let the rest take care of itself. You can't control factors out there in the world that, that aren't you know, sort of near to you. But you can control how you show up every day. You can control your level of preparation. You can control how you treat people. You can't control whether you're a person of integrity, someone that people trust. Control the things that you can control, let the rest take care of itself, and the world will come to you. I'll leave you with this. Dream big, because it's only those out there who dream big that will change the world. And that's my hope for each and every one of you coming through Heights. Good luck. Thank you very much for this honor. And uh, I look forward to coming back to celebrate sometime soon. At this time, I would like to welcome Mr. Jerry Wilson to the podium. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Wilson. I'm a senior on the football team. A uh, two-time state finalist for Decade Marketing and a part of Minority Student Achievement Network. After graduation, I'll be attending Ohio Dominican University, playing football and double majoring in marketing and entrepreneurship. <laughs> this afternoon, I'll be introducing Mr. Jock Evans, class of 1999. Mr. Evans is the founder and president of Flow Spirits and has created, created, developed, and designed the Flow Vodka brand. He was prom king his senior year and remembers several teachers who made a difference in his life, one specifically being Ms. Watson. After he graduated from Heights High, he opened a clothing store and began his journey as an entrepreneur. Besides being a successful businessman, he is also a devoted philanthropist. He started the Golden Opportunity Foundation that awards a $10,000 scholarship to entrepreneurial 
high tide students and raised more than $12.5 million for the Cleveland Clinic's Villaseno Bike, Bike to Cure event. While Mr. Evans told me that his original plan was to be a stand-up comedian, <laughs> it seems that his backup plan worked out pretty well. Uh, I don't, the comedian part, it is a joke in here in my bio. Uh, there's something wrong here. I didn't raise this money for Velasano. I participate in Velasano which raised this money for uh, a cure for cancer, just to be clear. First, I would like to thank uh, Cleveland Heights High School for this uh, privilege and honor to be a the family. I want to congratulate my fellow class here. It's a great group. I feel like a run of the litter. Um, I want to thank my two life-changing teachers, one Ms. Robinson who's in the room, came over from Atlanta, and the other one, uh, my favorite and uh, most influential teacher here at Heights, Ms. Watson. I want to thank my friends for all the uh, memories we created here at Heights, both good and bad, and some I will not share ever. Uh, I want to thank Marlon Barnes and Samson Prim, especially. I want to thank my staff and my team for the hard work and dedication and trust in me. I want to thank my mother-in-law and father-in-law, Donna Stewart Cole, for showing me kindness, success, and humility can live in one person. I want to thank my mother, for everything. <laughs> I was trying to think of something specific, but it's only one word that covers everything. I want to thank my dad for uh, showing me that a belt can be used for more than just holding up his pants. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to thank my brothers, my brothers for making me feel invincible growing up. And I want to thank my sisters for making me feel mortal. I want to thank my nieces and nephews for preparing me for fatherhood. I want to thank my kids for every morning, uh, the adventures that they bring to my life, both good and bad. I want to thank my wife. I never knew how important my heart was until you took it from me and decided you weren't giving it back. And last but not least, I want to thank God. I am uh, I am the poster child for I am the poster child for it's not how you start it's how you finish. Growing up, I was a genius trapped in the body of an idiot <laughs> with the attention span of a squirrel crossing traffic. I was a very polite, ungrateful kid that didn't take advantage of the opportunities my parents were providing for me. I was smarter than all of my teachers. I was so smart that in my first semester of progress report, I received all Fs. And the thing, the thing about having all Fs, see, when, you're all, when you have all A's, every teacher loves you. You're an easy kid. But when you have all Fs, you, that's when you find out who really cares. And I remember it was parent-teacher conference day. That's when you go around to all your teachers and you meet with your parents. So I was with my mom. And we went to all of my classes, and it was bad report after bad report. I mean, it was, it was bad. I didn't know I was this bad until I sat in front of these teachers and my mom. And I could just see my mom looking at me with that wait till we get home face. And I was just writing help me on my hand, trying to show people in the hallway. Everybody was looking me off. So I remember we got to uh, Miss Watson's class. And at this particular time, the reports were so bad, I was literally fearing for my life. So we got to Ms. Watson's class. Now, Maya, when I first met Ms. Watson, I didn't like Ms. Watson. Ms. Watson didn't like me. We didn't get along. She kept giving me this stuff called homework, <laughs> as if I came here all day to take work home. <laughs> then when I would come every day, she wanted me to learn. I said, Ms. Watson, I didn't get up at 7 in the morning 
and get this fresh and come here to learn. <laughs> High school is a fashion show. <laughs> and so I remember we got to Ms. Watson's class. My mother goes in first. They tell me to shut the door. I let the door slightly crack because I was planning to run. And we sat down, and I was halfway out of my seat because I just knew I was about to get a bad report. And Ms. Watson looked at my mom and she said, your son is a genius. He is a true genius. If he just applied himself, work hard, block out distractions, he will grow up to be a very successful young man. And I guess she was right. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Cullen Moyer. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Cullen Martin. I'm a sophomore here at Heights High School. I am an uh, AVID, the National Honor Society, and I'm a member of the varsity football team. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Jason Kelsey from the class of 2006. Mr. Kelsey is a member of the Philadelphia Eagles football team, 2018. The 2018 Super Bowl champions. His path to get there is an impressive example of determination and hard work. He was a typical student when he was a high tie. He liked to socialize and would never back down from a challenge. He played in the symphonic winds and jazz band and continues to play saxophone in his spare time. Just last month, he sat in with the Heights High Jazz Band when they were on tour in Philadelphia. He told a reporter that before he was a Super Bowl champion, he was a Heights Tiger. Mr. Kelsey, we are so happy you are also a member of the Heights High Hall of Fame. <laughs> really wish I'd have written something down. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, just yesterday I was sitting in this auditorium or playing on stage, and I remember pretty fondly that the, uh, the Heights alumni book that had all the previous members, and it used to be right outside that door. I don't know if it still is, but I remember going through that, and uh, at no point when I was going through that did I ever think I would be up here um, becoming an inductee, as well as all of these fine um, inductees with me. Um, you know, I started a, you know, I am a Super Bowl champion and a Heights High alumni, but I did want to say that uh, the greatest achievement this season, this year, has been that I finally uh, got married to my wife, uh, Kylie, right here in the front row, second row. And um, as we, we just bought a house in PA, and as we uh, were looking for houses, I tried to find a house that embodied all the um, values and the, uh, and the diversity that Cleveland Heights had, something that had uh, all uh, spectrums of, the, of, of economic inequality uh, to uh, uh, cultural diversity, and um, I can't find it. There's no place like the Heights. There really isn't. And I remember asking my dad, you know what, what did, uh, you know, how did you guys find the Heights? He said, well, he kind of came clean. We didn't really move there because we had that foresight. We moved there because your mom needed to be closer to work. So the bottom, the bottom line is we lucked out into this. We lucked out into coming into an incredible community that has taught me so much about being uh, uh, a, a member of, uh, of all cross, all walks of life. And I think that the, uh, education I've gotten from, uh, uh, from, from friends and family, uh, to, uh, to teachers, to coaches, uh, to my parents, obviously. What all of, the, all of this entire community has instilled in me uh, is something that I think a lot of other communities could do uh, to have a lot more of, quite frankly. And it's something that I value so much. Um, I'd like to close with a quote from my grandfather. Um, my kind of my uh, my whole walk to making it to the NFL. I started out in Heights. I was a linebacker. I moved and walked on at a University of Cincinnati, and I was very lost. And it was a point in my life where I didn't really have uh, a lot of self belief because a lot of the colleges had told me I wasn't going to be able to make it, um, and that they weren't interested in giving me a scholarship. And if it wasn't for my grandfather giving me this quote and my parents for pushing me. <sighs> 
But the, the quote is, uh, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, the world is fun, full of unsuccessful men with talent. Education will not, the, the world is full of educated derelicts. Genius will not, unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Um, and while I do um, think that I've had a lot of those qualities, I think that everyone else, this community, the coaches I've had, the friends I've had, the parents I've had, have given me that confidence in myself to continue to pursue and, and, and uh, push for those dreams. And uh, I can't say thank you enough to this entire community and to everybody who's helped me achieve greatness. And um, I'm just so proud to be a Heights alumni and inducted into this Hall of Fame. So thank you very much. I would now like to welcome Tyreek Smith. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tyree Smith. Uh, I'm a senior here at High Tide. Uh, I'm a captain on the football team, uh, basketball team, and a member of the National Honor Society. Um, in the fall of 2018, I'll be attending uh, The Ohio State University. Uh, on a full ride scholarship for football and also majoring in business finance. I am honored to introduce Mr. Travis Kelsey, uh, class of 2008, and a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. And when, uh, <laughs> when Travis was out of high, uh, high school, he played basketball, football, hockey, and baseball. <laughs> uh, he is the founder of 87 and Running, a foundation that provides Resources to empower the youth. Uh, Mr. Cre uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Kelsey uh, credits his mother, uh, Donna, for always encouraging him to give back to others. He said Heist taught him uh, how to accept everyone, and if you want to get respect, you have to give respect. As he as he talked about our community, he said he appreciates the diversity, and that he loves Heist High. I'm honored to introduce Travis Kelsey. And sir, we want to know that Heist loves you back. Woo! Oh, man. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm a little passionate about the Heights. Got a new jacket today. <laughs> right? Funny, uh, funny story, when, um, when it came down to me getting a Letterman's jacket my senior year, uh, actually, my, what I first varsity, uh, my first board, um, my mom told me, she said, well, either you can save up and get a class ring, I like shiny things, or you can get a letterman jacket like your brother. I was like, well, Jason's a loser. <laughs> but um, when I left Heights, um, I realized how awesome it was to have that H on a jacket. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, in the NFL, um, when the games are broadcast, I'm big, big, uh, I'm big, whoo, on big networks. Um, you get the opportunity, if you're a starter, to tell everybody uh, where you're from. My brother made me a crybaby when I was little. <laughs> Um, and most guys tell everybody uh, their university. I mean, even my brother uh, says he's from the University of Cincinnati, and um, everybody always asks me why. Why don't I say University of Cincinnati? Man, wrong story. Wrong story. Let <laughs> uh, me see that, Dad. Give me that thing. Give me that thing. All right, so 
I say, my name is Travis Kelsey, and I'm from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. And it's not because I don't appreciate the time that I had at uh, the University of Cincinnati, because I do, I cherish it dearly, but um, there was a time when I was at uh, Cincinnati that it wasn't, uh, whew, it wasn't easy for me. It was, um, it was tough. I got my, uh, my scholarship taken from me. I did a lot of dumb things. I'm sure everybody in this room knows someone from Heights has done a lot of dumb things. Um, but uh, to all my friends, I was that guy. And um, I, uh, I got my scholarship revoked. And um, I was at my lowest point I've ever been in my life. I didn't know if I was going to be able to go to school still because that was my scholarship. Um, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to keep playing sports because I felt like that was my only really uh, thing that I could strive for and achieve um, were, were athletics. Um, but uh, I just want to say thank you to the people in this room and the people in this community because it was, um, there were a lot of days where it's easy to doubt yourself in those situations and uh, all the, uh, all the family, all the friends, all the teachers. Um, I could not stop thinking about the people that counted on me, that pushed me to get to that point in life just to screw it up. Um, all the people that, uh, that believed in me, that I could actually make these dreams come true. And, um, because of how special Heights is to me, um, because of how special Heights is to every single person up here, I mean, you heard all the stories, um, how diverse this place is. Um, it built something in me that every single thing that I do is for this city. And I know it's, it's, it sounds cliche, but I promise you, every single thing that I do out there, when you see me dancing in the end zone, that's Cleveland Heights for you right there. Mm -hmm. There's far too many people to thank here um, for the, uh, I just look at Mr. Sack. Mr. Sack, I apologize. <laughs> I see it now, I see it now. That's all I gotta say. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's a true honor. I mean, my brother said it himself, the, the Rolodex for the Hall of Fame was right out there on the blue carpet. It's awesome to see that red brick still in the main hallway. Um, even though this school is, uh, is brand new and beautiful, um, it still has the character of that, that Heights High feeling, and I love it. And um, even coming back here today, me and my friends were joking around, and man, we just want to roll the window down and get some of this fresh air from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Because man, it, it built something very powerful, very, um, very passionate, and um, I can't thank everyone in here enough for giving me this opportunity um, 10 years later to say I'm a Hall of Famer at uh, Cleveland Heights High School. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear from each one of you. Thank you. Very heartfelt, tearful remarks, but heartfelt. Congratulations once again to each of the newly installed members of the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for joining in today's celebration of excellence. And please join me in a final round of applause as we honor each and every one of our inductees. Thank you again.